Hi there, it's John from Commercial Real Estate Online. Welcome to the program. Welcome back to part two of the Sales Victories video show. There are three parts to the program. There'll be another part coming out tomorrow to complete the overall list of ideas to help you with your sales activities in commercial real estate. Now, this is a changing market around the world, and that is a good thing. As I share ideas with my sales and leasing and property management people around the world, I always like to encourage you to get involved with the market because change brings opportunity. Now, in this particular group of slides, I'll go down into the sales victories, strategies again to help you go further with your sales activity, to give you focus, to give you the strategies that really do work in this market. So get ready for the program, grab your coffee, have a listen, and of course I will be posting these particular slides on the website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. Let's get on with the program. So in today's market, as agents, we have to figure out different systems to encourage listings, client contact, and ongoing growth of our market share. And it all comes down to what we're doing, what we're doing every day. And that is a personal thing. As agents, we have to engage in one-on-one -on -one marketing. And that allows for personalised communication with customers, increasing the chances of effective promotion for yourself and for your listings. So the agents that are looking for listings in a market that is changing should understand that it's a matter of getting involved with people, property situations, understanding what's going on in the territory and the property types. So engaging is the key word, engaging with people. I would encourage you to think about how you can get more of that engagement underway. Because in a changing market, it is a massive opportunity, but it all comes down to what you're doing how you are approaching people in a regular and ongoing way, and staying organised is part of that. Now, by targeting individual customers, direct marketing approaches enable agents to tailor their messages to specific needs and preferences. So the idea there is that you should be targeting groups of people because your knowledge, your skills, are tuned for a particular property type and group. So who are the clients, the prospects that you could work for? Property investors, business owners. You could also work for property developers or franchise groups. And I did say in the last session of slides that you can also connect with the allied professionals that can provide us with lots of business. And they are the financial accountants and also the lawyers who get involved in property transactions because both of those groups have plenty of clients that we can help over time. And as that lawyer or that accountant starts to trust you, they'll start to introduce you to their clients and many of those lawyers and accountants have plenty of clients that own property. Targeting individual customers, that's what it's all about. One-on-one -on -one marketing fosters a deeper concentration with customers, leading to loyalty and retention. So one-on-one -on -one marketing is about getting involved with people consistently, professionally, directly. And getting involved involves really just two things, plenty of phone calls and from that plenty of meetings. There are other things you can do of course like social media but I'll talk about social media in the last session of slides which is group three and I'll do that tomorrow. But right now today, I want you to focus on how you can make more calls, how you can track that information in some sort of list or contact list or database, and how you can approach new people because the market evolves around people, situations, new people, current people, creating the conversations. Now, examples of direct marketing include, of course, telephone calls, personalized emails, direct mail campaigns, through the mailbox, targeted social media advertisements and telemarketing. So there's a number of things there for you to choose from 
I would encourage you not to do too many of those things at once. In fact, I would encourage you to focus on just two or maybe three. The good ones that get lots of results are the telephone calls, the personalised emails, and the direct mail campaigns. And of course, the direct mail campaigns involves postage, and that can be expensive depending on what country you're basing your campaign from. So, use the telephone, correct, create personalised emails and connect with people. That's all about telemarketing, of course. Going a bit further. When you think about real estate today, you think about a number of different things. Essential skills, developing your skills, and the art of negotiation. Now this one here is interesting in that we are in a changing property market. And as part of that changing property market, you can adjust to the circumstances, the pressures, the opportunities that people will come to you and put to you. So you can always practice how to deal with people, that is the clients, perhaps the sellers, perhaps the landlords, depending on whether you get involved with selling or leasing or both, and the pressure points that they need to think about. Ultimately, they want a transaction. They want a deal in a fair and reasonable way. Now, some clients, of course, are totally unrealistic because they don't understand the market and fail to accept the market conditions. However, the majority of clients, customers, prospects, 80% of them at least understand what the market's doing and they will eventually be conditioned into accepting a transaction on the terms of the market today. And that's where you become an expert negotiator. On the comment of developing skills, and this particular skill here is all about your time, your focus, how you're doing the right things each day. I would encourage you to use your diary system, whatever it is, diligently, comprehensively, so you're connecting with people for at least 50% of your day. The other 50% of the day can be devoted to negotiations and or transactions and marketing. So what did I just say there? I said that you can spend half of your day connecting with people, that is, prospecting. The other 50% of your day can be devoted to admin, transactions, marketing. So when you look at your property market as it is today, you've got plenty of things to do. You've got listings, you've got a prospect list, a database, and all of your essential skills have to come together to navigate complex real estate deals effectively. And that can involve the methods of marketing, the prices, the rents, the transactions, the best method of sale or lease. And you are the person to take a person through that, to take your clients, your prospects through that activity. Let's go further. Handling all of the transaction variables. I did say to you that it's a changing market. And as part of that, you've got to go with the changes. You have to be prepared to talk through the changes of the market and support those changes with knowledgeable evidence for your client and or prospect. So strategizing to achieve a positive outcome amid all the market pressures, that's what brokerage is all about. It requires careful analysis of all the variables and their impact. That's why you should be a specialist in a particular property type and a location. Now, understand all the variables that are around you every day. Commissions, marketing, pricing, demand, and listing. Those variables are the things that you have to work with and you negotiate through all of them. Become skilled in each of them, considering all the elements of the market that exist today. You are the expert. When you consider it, you negotiate many situations across many properties throughout the year. Your clients just negotiate one or two property transactions a year, depending on who they are. So it stands to reason that you should be a better negotiator, given the situations of the property market in your location. So understand the market trends, of course, and customer behaviour based on what's going on in your market today. I did say to you earlier that it is a changing market and you should use that to your opportunity. Get involved with the changes. We can not change the market ourselves, but we can change how we respond to the people and the property situations. 
and that is the makings of a top agent. Now, leveraging technology and data analytics, that's really important. Technology, of course, will be your, your mobile phone, your computer, emails, brochures perhaps prepared for marketing. All of that comes into that particular topic. But then data analytics is all about what's happening with sales and leasing activity locally within the property type. And when you analyse things, you can get valuable insights into transactions, the variables, prices, rents, supply and demand. So top agents are very good at analysing what's going on, very good at adjusting their negotiation variables. So when you think about it, everything is about getting across the line with a transaction, sales or leasing, closing successful transactions. Today, you'll be closing transactions under certain elements of property pressure and opportunity. Understand the key terms and the concepts for transactions, closing transactions. You can learn a lot by reading books about real estate, commercial real estate, of course. Now, the financing options are always changing as well. Ultimately, the banks want to lend money to people who can afford it. So the banks are always lending money. It's a matter of your clients having su- sufficient equity and value in their portfolio and or property purchase intentions to get that finance. And of course, you can know some, some mortgage brokers and banks as part of providing finance or helping that finance to be achieved for the buyers of property today. Now, settlements involve finalisation of a transaction, transfer of ownership. You know, you know all that. The issue is that once you do a deal, you put something on paper between the parties, a contract, for example, that is the selling and the buying of property. Your client will typically be the seller of the property, I would hope. When the contract exists, what you need to do is follow that through to make sure it goes across the line in a completed transaction because there will be variables between the seller and the buyer and the legal people doing the documentation, they will become concerned or perhaps see other variables that didn't exist when the contract was created. So you have to stay there to make sure that gets across the line. Clear communications are important in our game of real estate, so important, and negotiation as well. But what I say here is this. When you talk to someone on the phone or have a meeting about anything in a transaction, and the topic was important to the transaction. Whatever was agreed or discussed should be evidenced in an email back to the party immediately after the event, so that you've got some evidence there, and you're removing any doubt between yourself and the party of what was said and agreed. In our game of real estate, that's very important, because people will disagree and or later change the facts and or the truth of what actually happened to suit themselves. They'll do that to suit themselves. That can leave you in a problem zone. Going further. So improving your skills. I'd like you to think about how you can improve. Because the property market is all about improvement. You can always learn. Absolutely. You can learn how to talk to people, engage with people, prospecting. Let's go further actually. When you think about real estate, there's a number of different elements which are totally different than each other, and yet they all form part of a transaction. So let's look at them, and then you can consider how you can learn to improve those particular things. The first one will be prospecting for new business. The second one will be listing a property, presenting to list a property. The third one will be marketing a property comprehensively to encourage inquiry. The fourth one will be inspecting a property with qualified people to show them the benefits of that property so they'll put in an offer. And then lastly, you have the element of negotiation. So you can learn all of those and improve them over time. If you've been an agent for a long time, that learning comes naturally. But if you are an agent that is relatively new in the industry, then learning can be fast-tracked by reading books on the topic and then practicing what was in those books. And when you practice, talk aloud, 
Practice your dialogue aloud, that sort of thing. Practice your scripts and dialogues aloud. So reflecting. Property transactions are always a learning opportunity. Most property transactions are different than each other. That means as agents we can learn from a transaction, we can avoid a problem again in the future which we might have learnt from this particular transaction today. So learning is important. So when you think about your game of real estate, there's lots of team knowledge that you can also tap into. Team knowledge, that is sharing negotiation experiences in your team meetings, given that the property market is changing. When you learn something from a transaction, share it with the team. By sharing those negotiation experiences, the team members can learn from each other's successes and failures. And then utilising that team knowledge helps in developing effective negotiation strategies and improving overall performance. So whilst you are an individual agent, with your individual skills and driving yourself forward, and that is how you do things, by the way, it is a very personal game, commercial real estate. It all comes down to what you do, what you think, how you approach things, your database, your conversations, your meetings. But you can always improve. And when you start to improve, share the ideas around the team so that you're learning from the other experiences of the other agents in transactions today. So that is the end of this particular group of slides. There is one more group of slides in this particular group and I'll be posting those tomorrow on the channel. I'll also put an article for you to read which is all about agent performance and negotiation in a market like this. So make sure you follow the link to that particular article. Read it, print it off. It can help you. It can give you those extra skills and prompt your ideas when it comes to a, neg a difficult negotiation and or a client. So the website to contact us is commercial-realestate-training.com. Thanks for listening to the program. My name is John Highman. I like to share my experiences after 35 plus years in the industry in sales, leasing and property management of large properties in different locations in many busy towns and cities. So enjoy the ideas. I'll catch you again very soon in the next video. Catch you soon.